Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Phil. You're watching at IB Tut, and today I will be showing you how to bring in your logos from Illustrator to 3ds Max, so you can animate them in 3D and work with them and and have your logos swishing and 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 logo intros and stuff like that. Um, this will not be a full-blown 3ds Max tutorial nor a full-blown Illustrator tutorial, but I just want to show you how to take it from one program to the next and what to look out for. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, what we have here is the Inconsistent Pictures IP logo. Um, simple enough, uh, just splines colors. The colors really don't matter because when you import it to 3ds Max, um, there's no color, it's just all splines anyway, so it's not going to make a difference on what it looks like. Um, but what you want to do is you want to double check and <clears throat> check all your anchor points and, and all your lines and stuff and the easiest way to do this is to go to outline mode and that is control Y and that way it brings outline mode select everything with control A it kinda closely examine everything anchor points anchor points we got a double anchor point right here but that's actually not gonna cause us a problem um, sometimes it will sometimes it won't it really depends on your logo and what you plan on doing with it <clears throat> would determine on if that causes you a problem. Uh, the IP logo itself actually doesn't have any problems because this was made to go into the 3D program, so that's fine. But I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna quickly show you a simple oddity that happens, and I found it when I was doing my perfect dark intro. If you haven't seen it, uh, there's a link right here, right now, probably if I put it up there, and um, you can go watch it. It's cool. It's simple. Um, and this is pretty much how I got it done. So uh right now we have this text which actually we're gonna redo that. We're gonna go perfect space D yeah, okay. Perfect dark. Um I'm gonna make that big. Alright, now what we have is a perfect dark text. Let me make that a little smaller now. You know what? I'm going to just hide that. To hide your artboard, you go Control shift h and to hide your artboard, that little black box. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to create outlines. So we go Control shift o and that creates everything to be its own separate letter now. So though it looks like they're touching, well, they're touching, but it looks like they're one. They're actually not. They're still individual characters. Um, and what you want to do to get rid of that is to go Pathfinder, Window, Pathfinder, or Control or Control shift f 9 and what that does is everything that's touching becomes one object and so on and so forth. Now this is a good thing and a bad thing. Um, when you're going into a 3D program you might get some what I like to call oddities and oddities are your anchor points being created because they were objects they were single objects and when they touch and they're combined they create other anchor points like here see how there's all these anchor points in actuality there would only be four because there's only four corners but since they were two different objects and they were touching at separate points you got anchor points here anchor points here that are actually unnecessary and to get rid of those use this minus key and start clicking them out clicking them out clicking them out and you're good um, but there's some major oddities that happen that will create an issue um, when you actually import into your 3d program and here goes one right here. Well, this this right here is just two anchor points. One's lower than the next. Um, and you just want to delete one of the anchor points. And that anchor point would have to be this one. Um, but hold on. You know what? I'm going to save that for a minute because i got an example to show you guys. Uh, and I don't know if that other one is there. The other oddity isn't there. Um, sometimes what may happen as well is an anchor point will create or move past where it's supposed to be so you might get something like this um, like that which is actually hard to see because you really don't zoom in that well or that far um, when you're doing it you just you know you do it and you're going about your business but that's definitely something you want to worry about and check out when you do it so always control Y to outline mode and then control A to grab everything um, and just check your anchor points. If there's extras, minus key, and just start deleting them. Um, if there's no need for them, then then just take them out. 
if it's on a straight line like that and there's four or five different anchor points on that then just take it out because it's, it's unnecessary um, just like that and you'll be set and you should be good check it check it, and recheck it uh, we're not going to do the, the perfect dark text so I'm not going to really worry about it um, but moving on alright so we got the IP logo and all that's fine all that's fine and dandy let's go ahead and get rid of this uh, that layer Yep. alright so we got the IP logo uh, we got the oddities out the way you checked it rechecked it and everything's set ready to go um, we're gonna save it so you wanna go file save as or save it depends and usually I will create two files one is for a for the regular which would just have the, the original name and then for the 3D model I'd go dash 3D and that way you can kinda of just keep track because it actually has to be two separate files so we're gonna do that we save it and then we go over here and this is the part usually you would save it as CS5 and go on about your business but since this is the 3D one and we have to take it in the 3DS Max um, we will have to save it as Illustrator 8 or 3 or I don't know about Japanese Illustrator but we're not gonna go there um, 8 I usually just save it as 8 uh, you can do 3 as well but 8 the newer version that will allow this to happen and you just click OK um, now that that's saved out it's ready to go. Um, also, I don't know exactly why it does it that way or why it has to be eight or three. It just has to do something with the versions and the way the program, the the way 3ds Max reads that Illustrator file. Um, so yeah. Anyways, moving on. Now that we have that, we will go ahead and move over to 3ds Max. All right. So now that we're in 3ds Max, what we will do? Let me go ahead and set this up real quick. I usually just use two. Um, Windows it's just easier for me um, that's the way I like to design and then F3 and F4 maybe F5 all that's set and I merge it so import merge um, and we're gonna navigate to our place mine is on the desktop go down here to all files and open you wanna just merge it I, I usually just merge it and then you wanna go multiple objects not just one and there we have it so there goes your your logo right it's in there but right now it's just in spline form um, it's just flat they're just lines remember what I was telling you that the color would matter well yeah it doesn't matter here um, you know what also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it bigger so control a and then bring up R, and I'm just going to bring that up like such G to get rid of the grid and then Alt W to open and expand the windows. Um, now what we're going to do is all these things are individual. Uh, that's well, that's all connected to that. But we needed to connect to this other line since these are both the same. And what you want to do is you want to grab this outside and you want to go over here, click attach, attach that, then right click to release and now that's all one piece and we're going to do the same for the rest of it as well <clears throat> so this is a part of that so we're going to go ahead and attach attach that to that and then also this part up here for the eye so now it's all connected and it's all good now right click to release we're going to go bevel and we're going to bump it up a few oopsie there it goes alright let's take those off alright cool so now we have that now we're going to do the same for the outside and we we'll go here to your modifier list, bevel, and we'll just move this down. Now, voila, there you have it. I mean, your your logo is officially in 3D. Oh, you know what? Let's go ahead and rotate this. Uh, e, snap tools on by pressing A, and we're just gonna snap it to 90 degrees right here. F, release, and there you have it officially oh, P for perspective not orthographic your logo is officially in 3d now you can do all kinds of good stuff animate it um, and all that other good stuff for video intros and stuff like that but that is my favorite way and my opinion easiest way to import logos into 3ds max now if you're like well Phil I don't have 3ds max well you know what you can use Cinema 4D, or if you're looking for a really cheap way of doing things, you can go with Blender, which is actually a free application, and 
it's a 3D program as well. So if you can't afford 3ds Max or or Cinema 4D, uh, definitely check out Blender. Uh, there's tutorials online and all that other good stuff. Get to know that, um, and you can definitely do your 3D logos or your logos in 3D. Um, now, the more complicated your logo is inside of Illustrator, will definitely impact on how complicated it's going to be inside of 3ds Max and or any other 3D program. Um, I believe that is it. So, uh, thank you for watching. I am Phil. Thumbs up. Give me some of them thumbs. I need some of them. Uh, subscribe, comment, uh, check out my Facebook fan page if you want to see some of my work, which is facebook.com slash agent orange effects. Should be a link. Um, also check out the, the inconsistent pictures, uh, fan page. Uh, all the links and stuff are in the description. Um, I got a lot more stuff coming. I need some subscribers. Tell your friends. Tell your friends' friends. Uh, definitely tune in next time. I think the next tutorial will be another one in Illustrator. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah. Um, check out check out the the YouTube. There's other tutorials. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, thank you for watching again, and uh, I guess I can just say thanks. <laughs>